Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of Battling Brushes, and this week Rob and I are getting back to normal because we'll both be tackling some models this week, so should be a lot of cool stuff involved. This week I'm going to be taking care of the Stormcast Prosecutors. The Stormcast Eternal Prosecutors, the ones that I like to call the Archangels. They give, they've got the wings and stuff, so it'll be really cool, I think. Uh, really neat effect on the wings and everything like that, so... We're going to check that out in a little bit. And then Rob is going to be um, tackling his uh, commanders of, of his armies. And you know what? I forget their names because they're long and they're strange and they're kind of grotesque. So anyway, uh, but he does a great job painting them as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, get to the painting table. Let's see what we can see. As you can see, I've already base painted it in black, flat black. And uh, just to give you an idea of what we're shooting for, we are going to go for something that looks like this. So as we're starting, um, basically all I did was we took a little bit of the uh, Retributor armor <clears throat> and we're going to be doing that as the base coat for the armor. Now I'm um, using a smaller brush uh, so that um, I can kind of control how much of the paint goes on and, and where it goes on, but uh, for the most part, like I said earlier on some of my other videos, it's a modified dry brush technique. Uh, here we're just going to get started uh, putting this Retributor armor over uh, as much of the model as we can, not worrying too much about uh, details and getting into the cracks and everything like that because we do want to use those as uh, use that black primer as kind of a a uh, cheat. This is a kind of unwieldy model because of how gingerly it is perched upon its base with these with these uh, scrolls so have fun with that because you're gonna need it it for his body now we have to uh, tackle those wings because if you look on the pictures and stuff like that all of these little starburst patterns and uh, the edges of his wings are all armor as well so um, here is where having a little bit of a smaller brush comes in a little handy because you don't want to get it too much on the actual wing part you just want to get in there so With this uh, sepia, uh, seraphim sepia, we're going to go ahead and give this model a wash, and uh, then we're going to have a dry brush over that, so it, it, it'll have a pretty cool effect. So with washes, really all you're wanting to do is uh, work that stuff in as best you can into all those little crevices, and it provides a really good shading effect so you just get that brush full of that wash and work let it work its own magic rather be liberal with it um, you can use it you can spread it around as much as you want and it provides a really neat effect
So after we have that uh, uh, shade that is dried on there, you can see it has a really cool looking, well, I think it's cool at least, um, red tint to it, kind of a brownish red tint to it, and that's pretty cool. Now, what we're gonna do now is we're going to go over, I'm gonna dry brush over that shade with a little bit of uh, Liberator Gold and uh, that's gonna make everything kind of pop really good um, for lack of better English. As you can see it's really making that model pop really good so now we're going to be doing uh, the leather-ish parts of the model. Uh, the leather is going to be the hilt of the hammers. He has a little belt going around his waist. And then what I'm going to do is um, to kind of give the uh, scrolls that um, parchment look that we have there. Um, as you can see, we start with a base of the same color of leather. Um, and uh, all of this right in through here and all of this kind of thing right in through, well, you can't see it. For all of these guys right here, this is all parchment, um, the little ribbons. So <clears throat> the, the belt, the hammer hilts, and uh, the ribbons are all the same base. I'm doing a, uh, a scrag brown uh, from Citadels for that, so. Okay, next, after uh, we have finished that um, scrag brown on the bottom layer of the scrolls and uh, on the bottom layer of the uh, hammer hilts, we're going to hit it again um, with a dry brush of Ushtabi Bone. And Ushtabi Bone is um, a kind of an off-white color and that's what we want. We, we're trying to add another layer of shade shadow to it. We're also going to hit it with a white, just a pure white after the uh, Ushtabi bone. Now the Ushtabi bone is going to be uh, kind of a, m another modified dry brush because we do not want to get into the recesses there. So we we'll want to use a flat brush and uh, just kind of pull along so you're just highlighting the raised portion of the brush. You don't want to, you, you always want to kind of have a, uh, a flat side on the actual model because you don't want the bristles to kind of get in there uh, at all hardly. So if it does a little bit, that's okay, but uh, you really want to try to stay away from it as much as possible just so that it is highlighting the raised portions only of that brown. Now we're going to begin with the wings. And with the wings, you want, I'm, I'm starting with a, uh, uh, where is it? And Outdoor Guard Blue, and again with the black coat on there. The reason I went, uh, reason I usually go with black coats is so that it helps me with the uh, shading effect that I want to try to reach. So if some of that black shows through, uh, it's okay. So just keep that in mind. And now we're going to go back and uh, we're going to take a little bit of a uh, electric blue and um, go back and dry brush over these wings. We're gonna try to start doing that latering effect. After the electric blue dries, we're gonna hit it with a white dry brush as well. So uh, it'll come away with a, a pretty neat effect of uh, kind of a glowing wing.
see the difference a little bit from the the side that has just the electric blue and the side that has the white how it just makes it pop a little bit more make sure you're keeping the brush perpendicular though because we don't want we don't want a whole lot of paint on the brush first of all Thanks, Sam. Well, today we're going to catch up and I'm going to finish most of the models, but I'm going to save the detailing for next week and some more on the bases. So let's get down to the table and get to work. So we're going to go over a few things and I'll explain what I did along the way. Now, if you've seen any of my series, you'll know that I am big about watering down paints. And not a heck of a lot. So we're going to try to keep this in scope here. I even have a target here where to keep the guy. <laughs> so you don't see my hand the whole time. And you're just going to add a little water. Now what that does, it acts as a solvent. Breaks down the binder and the pigment a bit. And we just want it because after we put that right car flesh in, we just want to go over and again highlight the higher areas of the flesh and we just want to give the muscle some structure and that's all we're doing right here now once again we want to take our corn red because we've already painted this guy up pretty much so as you can see I've gotten his flesh all washed down so now what I want to do so I want to take that, that Rikar flesh and spin my brush really, really, really well. And what I want to do is I want to hit those high areas again. Come in here at his hands. See how, how his jawline is. I want to accentuate certain areas. And the paint's nice and thinned out. So it doesn't take away from the wash as you see I'm going over his forehead around the back of his ear and I'm going to take my brush I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do his mu muscles I'm not going to use that word I know that guy from Britain boy gave me a hard time about using that word uh, his pectorals here you can see his ribs here so we're gonna we're gonna bring those out a bit Excellent. And then you could take a little, even though this is a Xandri dust for these skulls, you can take a little bit of that Rikar flesh and just go over to bring those skulls out a bit because it is a higher range color. And you could do this on the bone for the orifice. This is all Xandri dust in here. And all we want to do is just kind of accentuate some of the high points. Now we're going to take a little bit of our corn red. And we're going to do a couple things here. First thing is I want to show again. And I'm not going to water this down at all. But in here, all we want to do is just bring this. You see how much easier it is to paint the actual red in then if you were to paint the red over and then do the outline of the gold and that's the thing that I want to show you that this goes a lot quicker and you can see the control that you have especially if you have a nice thin brush and you just come in there and you can just whip this out now you just want to take some of that red and hit the high spots here that we went over with the Agrax earth shade because what happens is I painted the red and then I went over it with an Agrax earth shade which is a brown shade and the reason is it dulls down that that there we go sometimes it doesn't hurt to put a little water in it 
it dulls down that red and you can see by just not taking away from the shade but just hitting the higher ends that we are actually bringing these guys out into life so there we go we got that guy now the same thing was done with this guy the commander and again we're just gonna go over and hit the highlights and again this is one of those things where we just kinda already you know just painted everything gold and then we just touched up everything with the red and you can see by just going over that how much it starts to come back out now it's a little beastie here this is something I want to talk about what you do is you use a dawn stone gray and you go along where the ridges are so and then take your red and you mix it into his body while the gray is still wet because this gray is still wet and what this does is it creates kind of a dark blend now what's going to happen is I'm going to go over this with another wash of that Agrax Earthshade and what that's going to do it's going to connect this area and there's the result that we got for this guy I'll zoom in on these guys when we're done and these bases are dry okay now the Kilgarath and all we did was just do the basic covered him completely in red then taking our our Xandri dust and painted all the bone areas now what we're going to do is we're going to take some Gene Steeler purple and we are going to work in this groove here and we're going to bring out that sign of corn we're just going to work it in there we got it nice and thinned out with a little bit of water and we're going to work it in there so the symbol that is carved on his chest stands out now we're just going to take our Agrath's Earthshade now that he's nice and dry open it up and we take this straight out of the bottle here and we're going to blend these reds with the Agrax Earthshade. We're just going to go over his entire body because we want to darken up those reds. And we'll just come back to him after he dries and we'll just finish him up. Alright, now that that guy's good and dry, all we're going to do is just water this down a little bit. We're going to take some of that Xandri dust again and everything that we went over we're actually going to just basically go over the high points we're gonna work that that bone back in you see all we want to do we don't want to take away from the wash all we want to do is just hit the top of those skulls the foreheads we don't want to lose any of the definition that we have from the wash Remember, it's always the color, base color, a wash, and then back over with the base color again, only almost like a dry brush over it in a way. That way you don't lose anything there. And you see how that starts to come out. It starts to bring out those skeletons that are all in this guy. This guy's pretty gross, to be honest with you. Excellent. That's exactly what we want. Maybe we'll just touch this up a little bit and bring out some of that there we go there that looks like bone that's what we want all right so that's the Kilgrath so let's go take a look at these four beasties and see how they came out and there you have it the Kilgarath the base done in astro granite the standard bearer the Taskmaster, and of course the General himself. All done, ready to go. And that completes Age of Sigmar, the corn, the evil corn. Hopefully Sam's got his Age of Sigmar ready. Hey, let's send it back up top and uh, 
I'll finish my part here and then we'll send it back to Sam. There you have it guys. Um, a lot of it I, I just, uh, like I said, I, um, I did the base colors beforehand because it was a lot of repetition and you know with the segment you know time limit on the segment I wanted to make sure that I pointed out the high points it's very very basic and it's very repetitive because it's basically the same colors over and over again so I was just glad that we were able to get that um, so you guys can see the finer points of how to take care of these it's it's always the strong outside colors and then and filling in with the red and on putting up on my site if you go to Rob Oren on YouTube uh, Robert Oren on YouTube um, I will put up a video that'll say rules for battling brushes live playthrough and all you have to do it it probably only be a couple minutes long but I will have all the stats in the laminate that Sam and I will be using and you guys can copy them down as well as the rules and you guys can basically follow along if you like and I figure we've we've basically given you every advantage that we can, can so you can make a good decision on this. Sam, you got a lot of catching up to do. I'm all set and I'm just going to tweak things a little bit but you got quite a few figures. You did those angels, they look great but you still got a couple of big figures to do and to catch up to me and I'm pretty fast when it comes to painting so while you were sitting and reading the, you know the manual and having a great time at the board game geek convention okay without me thanks a lot for that too pal um, I was here working on our segment huh. I was working on getting and refining my team to wipe you all over the map big boy with that, let's send it back to you, kid, and take us out of here. Everybody, hope you had a great Thanksgiving, and we'll talk to you okay, soon. Okay, so, yeah. Maybe I took a little bit too much time waiting for Rob to finish because he snuck up on me, and then he passed me. A little bit of hare and tortoise type of thing going on here, I think. Anyway, well... Next week, as Rob said, he's going to be talking about a little bit more of the detailing side of his miniatures, uh, what to do with the bases, and a couple of touch-ups on on uh, painting side. But and then next week, I'll be I'll be tackling both of my um, both of my commanders. And uh, man, those models are amazing. You'll see them next week, but uh, should have a lot of fun painting those. And I hope you have a lot of fun watching the video next week. And then the week after that. We'll be live playing uh, the game of Age of Sigmar at Dice Tower headquarters here in Homestead. And uh, that should be a pretty cool thing there. You'll need to pay attention to that video, the live playthrough, because that's the video that we're going to uh, let you in on how you can get your hands on this copy of Age of Sigmar that we have painted together and uh, we're going to have kind of a mini uh, auction uh, with that last video. We'll have all those details and everything in the live playthrough video. So you'll need to turn it, tune into that and uh, get on it as quickly as possible. But hey, that's it for this week. We'll see you next week. Thanks so much for joining in. We'll see you on the flip side. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.